Hi, my name is Michael Everett, and on behalf of my collaborators, Golna Sabibi and Jonathan Howe, I'm excited to present our ICR paper, Efficient Reachability Analysis of Closed Loop Systems with Neural Network Controllers. So there's a, a lot of exciting progress going on across robotics and particularly using learning and machine learning to come up with groundbreaking new results uh, for perception, control, and motion planning. The question is when we think about bringing some of those advances to some of the systems depicted over on the right, uh, a lot of serious questions come up about how we can analyze the safety of these control systems that employ learned policies in the feedback loop. And some of the things that make this particularly challenging to verify the safety properties are that the neural networks involved in these problems are often very high dimensional and have nonlinearities, as well as the fact that these neural network control policies are embedded in feedback loops. And in a feedback loop, your neural network's outputs are going to affect its future inputs. So that adds yet another layer of complexity to the analysis. So the particular problem that we addressed in this paper is called reachability analysis. In reachability analysis, um, I, I'll just describe it in cartoon form over on the right first and then refer back to the equations on the left. So in this picture over here, you could imagine having a robot like a UAV and it starts in some known initial state set. And you want to understand what are all the possible states that the system could occupy in the future. And that, if you were to just have a particular trajectory from a particular realization of the noise processes, um, you'd end up you know, computing a single one of these um, blue trajectories. But really, if your noise um, could take many different values, what you want to do is compute these green rectangles or green boxes, which represent the reachable sets that are every possible state your system could occupy at each time. Then if those green sets, the reachable sets, don't intersect with your avoid sets and they do actually end up in your goal set, you can put this stamp of approval and say that your control system is verified to be safe, despite the fact that it has a neural network involved. So what this looks like over on the left in terms of the equations is we describe the reachable set R0 as your initial state set, which is known. And then recursively, you can compute the next reachable set at the next time step um, by passing all the states from your current reachable set through your dynamics F. So in this paper, we're going to assume that there's known linear dynamics. Um, you know your initial conditions. You're going to assume somebody's given you a trained neural network controller, and we're pretty flexible on what the kind of actual type of neural network controller is. It can have different activation functions. Um, in this particular paper, we, we focused on feed forward networks, but it should extend to other networks as well. And then we're going to assume that you're you're, you're, um, there's some bounded sensor and process noise. And then it ends up um, being depicted in terms of these pretty standard equations for your state transition observation, and then your nonlinear neural network controller, which, act, which actually applies control based on the current observation of the system. And then this, you know, this diagram represented in terms of a feedback loop where your policy is um, passing out controls to your plant. So when we think about reachable sets, we can write it as an optimization problem, where if, um, if we think about a reachable set description as a polytope, for each polytope facet, A, we're gonna compute some scalar B so that um, our next state lies within this kind of polytope description. And what we wanna do is come up with the smallest uh, scalar B so that our polytope is as tight as possible. And if we solve this exactly, we'd be subject to the constraints of following your nonlinear closed loop dynamics, which again are nonlinear because of the neural networks involved. And then um, you know, your, your state has to lie within the current state set. And we're going to think about what is your state going to look like at the next time step. So this optimization problem is intractable because of the nonlinearities in the neural network, as well as just the massive size of the neural network potentially, um, if, if it's one of these deep neural networks. And the same type of idea uh, Kind of extends to L infinity balls if you want to think about rectangles instead of polytopes, um, which can scale better to higher dimensions. So there's a lot of work looking at different types of neural network analysis. In particular, there's some really cool work coming out of the computer vision and machine learning communities, which um, can analyze neural networks in isolation. And I'll just describe really quickly the, the key idea here because we use that heavily in our approach. Um, so Really, the challenge is these nonlinearities. In this case, it's depicted as a ReLU. Um, that's one of the particular common neural network nonlinearities. And what these methods do is they say, OK, if you know that the input 
to your neural network at a particular layer lies within a certain region, you can actually approximate these nonlinearities by a couple of linear bounds. What we did in one of our recent works is we show that you can actually partition this um, set if you know the bounds uh, coming into your neural network. And that allows you to, you know, in certain parts of that partition, um, actually approximate the nonlinearity perfectly and then get an even better approximation um, in, in other regions of the partition. And we show that with some, you know, intelligent choice of how you partition the input set, you can come up with some nice tightening of the bounds on the output of your neural network approximation. So that idea of partitioning will come up later in the talk. That's why I wanted to describe it. Um, but of course, there's reachability analysis has been a topic throughout the controls community for quite a while. So a couple of important references that I cited right here and other notions of safety that are kind of orthogonal to what we're thinking about today in reachability analysis. Bringing these ideas into closed loop systems, there is some recent work looking at analyzing the neural network and dynamics separately. Um, and that leads to some extra conservatism that we try to address um, in our work today, as well as different approximations of the neural networks. And particularly um, one of the works using semi-definite programming um, is one of the works that we're really closely related to here that we're trying to extend. And the challenge here overall in this field of, of uh, making safety guarantees about these systems in a reasonable amount of time to do this kind of online is you want this system to be both computationally efficient to provide safety properties, as well as being giving tight bounds so that your properties are really meaningful. So the approach of our work is trying to solve that optimization problem from a couple slides ago, um, but do it in a little bit more relaxed way that allows us to do it faster. So what we're gonna do is starting from your reachable set uh, X0, um, you're gonna recursively compute next reachable sets uh, one after another. So to compute a particular one of those um, steps, we're first gonna take our neural network and use one of the ideas just from uh, the kind of computer vision machine learning algorithms that I pointed out before. Particularly, we used crown in this work. Um, and we're gonna compute an affine relationship between the control and the state, um, given that you know that your uh, current state lies within some uh, reachable set X in. So that allows you to say, even if your neural network is super nonlinear for your control policy, we can compute these bounds uh, that will always be satisfied within that region. Then we're gonna relate those bounds on the control with our dynamics based on some of the signs of the polytope and, and dynamics uh, matrices. And then we're going to write a linear program to allow us to say, you know, given your current state, um, the exact dynamics would follow probably some nonlinear function. We're gonna relax it um, based on the ideas pointed out over here. And then we're gonna find the optimal or the maximum value of this relaxed function. And that's gonna be what we ultimately want, which is bounds on the next state of your system. So the, in terms of a linear programming um, that I referred to on the last slide, you know, the main theoretical result of our work is we're looking for these tight polytopes. And instead what we're gonna do is compute an upper bound on the, the polytope facets uh, value. So we're looking for an upper bound on this B scalar, and we're gonna do it using linear programming um, there's a, you know, the, I'll leave the details of the, the proof of how this happens in the paper, but some of the common terms you'd expect to show up in the linear program, such as the dynamics matrices, A, B, and C, noise terms, um, like mix, minimum and maximum values of the noise, as well as the terms from relaxing the neural network in certain regions like this epsilon. So in terms of some numerical results, um, we tried this first on a double integrator system. And as expected, you know, the linear relaxations are going to yield some looser bounds than the quadratic relaxations. But this unlocks a little bit of extra computation time to allow us to um, do things in addition to just solving a single version of the linear program. In particular, we can recuperate the lost accuracy um, by partitioning the input set, which I described on one of the previous slides. So this picture describes kind of what's going on. Um, we sampled a bunch of points from a given input set and we ran for the dynamics to figure out where is the system going to be at different time steps in the future. And then we computed a bunch of these reachable sets using different algorithms. So the reach SDP is the prior work, that's these dashed red lines. And then the next three are different variations that we propose in our paper today. We're looking at the runtime versus the error. And, um, you know, just thinking about this kind of sequentially, um, 
if you take the error to be a value of 200 in terms of how closely this rectangle um, bounds these uh, Monte Carlo samples, we get as, you know, this value of 200 for the prior work. And then if we add this partitioning idea, we can bring that number down quite a bit, but it takes a lot more computation time. Then if we go kind of in the other direction and we uh, use linear programming, we bring the runtime way down, but we lose a little bit on error. And then we can bring in the partitioning idea right there and end up with overall about a 10x reduction in error with twice as fast calculations. And you know, recently this didn't make it into our ICRA paper, but we've brought that uh, computation down even a, another order of magnitude by using a closed form solution. And kind of the key takeaway of, of this type of analysis is that what we can do is we can verify that the system will robustly reach the origin's vicinity, which is a great thing to be able to do right before you're going to press go on your, say, your drone that's about to fly through some um, obstacle course, for example. This would be able to provide a guarantee that says, okay, I know, I don't know exactly what all the sensing noise is going to look like um, in terms of the exact realizations, but I know that the system is going to end up uh, near its, its where we'd like it to end up. We looked at another, another couple of ablations in the paper as well. So thinking about how to scale this method to deep neural networks. And we see um, the, as the network size grows, um, we see much better scaling of our LP based solutions in terms of computation time. Um, and then looking at another one of the kind of tuning knobs in our algorithm is how many facets you have in your polytope. So over here on the right, you see as you add more and more facets, which are basically adding more edges to the polytope. Uh, you can get tighter and tighter performance. Of course, you pay for that with a little more computation time. We also then in the paper scale up the idea to a six dimensional quadrotor and we add some sensor and process noise to just show that part of the solution. Um, in this case, a couple interesting things to point out. First is um, we're plotting just the XY position. Uh, so starting from here, looking about 1.2 seconds into the future, we can compute reachable sets as the vehicle tries to move towards the origin with some trained neural network controller. And you know, we're, in this case, if you look at the dynamics, we're able to handle continuous time dynamics um, just by doing some Euler integration. And then we can pack some of the nonlinear terms uh, from quadrotor dynamics, pack those away into the control value. Uh, and you know, it, it tends to, th this ends up working out pretty nicely in terms of um, broadening the scope from just linear dynamics to be able to handle some systems with nonlinear dynamics as well. So just to wrap up, um, the contributions of this work are a new convex optimization based framework uh, using linear programming that allows you to verify the safety properties of neural network uh, control systems. And this is based on you know, linear programming as well as using these new ideas from input set partitioning, which is really useful, particularly when your initial state set is large. We also showed how you can consider sensor and process noise in the analysis. And we showed how this improves your efficiency and tightness on different problems in robot dynamics. So I'd be excited to um, hear from anyone as with questions as well as I'd like to point you to our code, um, which is the URLs listed down here. So that has um, some of the, the software that we have been describing today. And I'd be excited to hear if anyone tries it on new systems or a new neural network, uh, I'd hear how it goes. Thank you.